let's talk about fasting now. Carbs, no carbs, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, so yeah. intermittent fasting, carbs versus uh, um, high fat diets, all that kind of stuff. So let's see. Uh, ketogenic diet, hot topics, fasting and the ketogenic diet. Tell us your experience with the ketogenic diet. Like, how, when did you first become introduced to it? Yeah, and and this is one of the great things about living. I was living and racing with really fast triathletes. I mean, these 800 people would start a race. These guys would come across the finish line first. Cole Blair, Jeff Cutapak, Patrick Davis, um, the Picciano brothers would run close to a four-minute mile. These are the guys that I was hanging out with, and and I would just watch them, and they were they were so gifted. Um, what was I going to say? The ketogenic diet. Okay, okay. Where did you start doing it? Okay. you got the book about the carbs. Okay. But yeah. he was only prescribing fat to certain people because otherwise he'd get shot down. Okay, that, but, okay. But okay. you eventually realized like... Yeah, yeah okay. Here, 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 here it is. Okay. I'm fading a little. So... Um, <laughs> Stay focused. Stay yeah. with me. And, okay, hang on a minute. All right. I mean, we had a video. We shot it. What's his face? He told us about it. I know. It's true. So... Can I just get into it right now? Yeah, go for it. Okay, so my group, it's 2016 now. The hot topics are the ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting. We started that in 96. Okay. So I started doing research, and, and I'm looking around. like I'm, I'm like, why are these, you know, we're riding 400 miles a week. I'm looking at all these marathon runners. In the town I was in, has more endurance athletes than just about anybody in Florida. So I'm looking around, I'm like, why are these people fat? I'm just saying, <laughs> including myself, I had, my body fat was like at 20%. Yeah. And I'm like, what, what am I doing wrong? So anyway, we started doing the ketogenic diet. But you were doing high carbs. Yeah, I was doing high carbs. You would do coffee in the morning, cookies. And yeah, cookies and carbs. And I, I called the owner of Power Bar, bro, Brian Maxwell, yeah. when he was alive. And he sent us a case of Power Bars for the SWAT team and for my training guys. Yeah, yeah tell us about that. And, and, and the Power Bar has about, I think, 10 different sugars in it. I handed him out during a stakeout while I was on the SWAT team. Like half the team fell asleep, and they're like, because of that yeah. serotonin burst, yeah. they're like, dude, those bars were designed to eat motion. But like I said, motion. What did we know? Yeah. But because I was with, um, because I was living with these athletes, and we were training every day back then, uh, I, I just asked questions, you yeah. know, just like I was when I was a paramedic. I mean, what the hell? Why is everybody heavy? What causes what causes weight gain? So we. You know, I said, maybe we don't need carbohydrates. So we cut the carbohydrates out of the diet. Oh, my God. Well, it's not an essential nutrient. Essential yeah, fatty is, acid, essential is. amino acid. I, I didn't know essential that. Essential carbohydrate. Didn't know no. that back then. <laughs> I, that, you know, that, that, that's one of my lines right now. When DNA unzips on a cellular yeah. level, you have essential protein, essential fatty acids. There's no such thing as essential carbohydrates. No. So, so back then, we're playing with it, right? And, and one of my buddies, he's in the video, Patrick Davis, he got shredded. Another guy was on it. I went on it myself, and I'm dropping weight for the first time. And here's what was really interesting. I was able to recover. Mm. Like, I, I didn't have any athletic gifts. I mean, I had to work for everything, but I noticed. Just do most I, I, of us. I, I, yeah, I know. I noticed, like, after a 13-mile run, I would do one long run a week with a group that I recovered in 24 hours. Mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, this, this is a fluke. Because we used to actually, everybody would bring home a bag of ice, and we would dump it in a big trash can, and we would stand in it Oof. at my house after the training days. Like, my house was a local triathlon. Your ankles and feet. Yeah, yeah. We, we would just soak ourselves in the cold water, right? So, and it would help us recover. So then, um, then we started the ketogenic diet. We started limiting, we started increasing our fat. And uh, I noticed recovery. I noticed that. My sex drive went up, which my testosterone levels went up because naturally, you, right? naturally, yeah. So now, now when we want to elevate somebody's testosterone levels, we improve, we increase their fat or increase the egg yolks. So on a cellular level, what does it do, kind of on a cellular level? On a cellular level, you got these little mitochondria. Mitochondria, like think, it, think, think of your cell as a big water balloon. All mm -hmm. right, inside there is this little round battery called your mitochondria. This diet, like the testing I've done on you, I'm testing how your mitochondria is utilizing carbohydrates, fats, and protein. And what we're learning now is, on a cellular level, your body will utilize fat. The Krebs cycle, right? The Krebs What's cycle. It? That's how our body produces energy, whether it's a brain cell or a muscle cell. Mm -hmm. So now we're able to test people on a cellular level, gotcha. and then by adding a high-fat diet, you just improve their performance 100%. And it's not only that. It's being used as a cancer therapy. It's releasing something in the brain called brain-derived neurotropic factor. So, you know, Jim Abrams, the Hollywood producer. Yeah, tell us about that. This is truly amazing. And, and, and there's, these stories are all over. You just got to find them. Yeah. Jim Abrams was a Hollywood producer. His son was having like over 100 seizures a day. 
He went to five neurologists. Nobody got any answers for him. He even, he even went to a neurologist that recommended surgery. He had surgery on his son, and his son was continually having these seizures. So he started doing research on his own, and he started researching the ketogenic diet to stop seizures. In the early 1900s, the ketogenic diet was used to stop seizures. This guy, a Hollywood producer, drilled down on it, found out. He talked to the neurologist about it, and they shot it down. They yeah. said, no, it won't work. He put his son on a diet anyway. Within a week, his son's seizures stopped. Wow. So this guy, of course... Makes a movie about it. Yeah, he makes a movie about it, because first do no harm, Meryl Streep's in the movie, and because of his passion and dedication, he started a foundation that focuses on the ketogenic diet, wow. on how it stops seizures. Well, that's amazing. What I see in the future is, like I said, I've got athletes on this performance-enhancing diet right now riding their bike 100 miles, and they're not taking in any food, and this high-fat diet is powering them through 100 miles, where before, when I would ride 100 miles, I'd be slamming bananas, power bars. My body was used yeah. to burning glucose, but once you get your body used to burning fat, yeah. that's what I do for ketones. these guys now. I mean, ketones. Yeah. Uh, ketones is a byproduct of fat. And there's more it's, energy to be outputted with the ketones. Exactly. Your brain and your heart yeah. utilize ketones more efficiently than sugar. And I'm, that's like, I mean, here, this Noakes, this guy, I love this guy. He was a guy I followed. Yeah all through the 80s and 90s, brilliant. And yeah. now he's even on, he's even saying right now, no, I was wrong with the carbohydrates. his book's all about carbohydrates, right? Well, there's, there's, he, he was talking about for performance, performance enhancement, enhancement, he was a carb guy back in the day. Um, there's much more in this book besides just diet, but injuries and, and how to train for a 100 mile race. He studied all the distance runners, but he was a big carbohydrate pro pro proponent back in the day. Yeah. Now, 2016. Like, no, whoops. No, he said, whoops. He said, listen, we, we utilize fat better for performance. And the guy that just won the Western States 100-mile run, I believe his name is Olson. He, he runs a 100-mile run. He's on a high-fat diet. So this whole paradigm, again, is changing. Yeah. And, and that's sort of where I go, whether it's being the first paramedic in the street and administering drugs, working with a, an advanced research lab and a cutting-edge pharmacy that gets busted or or now moving into these advanced treatment protocols, um, things are changing in real time right now, Trent. It's really exciting. Well, that's where a lot of the ketogenic stuff is getting kind of popular because in our society where we eat way too much, in a, in a diabetic, insulin-resistant society, they're using the ketogenic diet to help with diabetes and reduce that and even reverse the effects of that, too. Yeah, imagine that right now. Uh, there's a diabetic center here in Orlando that has 10,000 patients. We could go in there right now and turn that whole center around the whole diabetic treatment protocol is completely wrong. There's nutritionists saying right now that you need 100 grams of carbs a day. You do not need 100 grams of carbs a day. The studies are out there. The studies are being done. So much glucose to just power a little bit of part of your brain, your body produces enough. Think about glucose. it. You've got 1,000, you have 1,000 teaspoons of sugar in your body. Circulating glucose in your body is maybe one teaspoon. One teaspoon. One. Half a slice of bread will shut off fat burning. A half a slice of bread. All these kids that are getting up in the morning and eating cereal and... Yeah. They're elevating their insulin levels. But, you know, you, again, you got to drip on these people slowly because can mm. you imagine telling a mom that their son or their daughter doesn't need three meals a day and they, they would have a heart attack? What do you mean? What do you mean? Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And that's that's why, you know, you got to clean the chalkboard in people's heads. It's, that yeah. It's training. It's new religion. It's, it, it is, dude. It, it uh, is. Well, intermittent fasting. Let's talk about intermittent fasting because you mentioned three meals a day. Most people are like, well, I eat five or six meals a day, small meals a day. And, you know, that has its own different effects on your know, pancreas and your in insulin and stuff. But tell us about intermittent fasting and what people are doing with that and the results they're seeing. Yeah, let me, let me first say this. I think the ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting are great tools. But I also belong to a couple of Facebook pages where I'm trying to help folks that are on the ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting. And you got to remember that some of these people come into these diets nutritionally and hormonally deficient. Huh. And when they start the diet, it's another stress to their body, and they're having problems. And everybody's saying, hang in there, be strong. And it's, it's not about that. It's about getting a baseline blood work and knowing where you are. First. Because if you start this diet deficient, it, it, it could make your symptoms worse. Gotcha. You know what, you know what I'm there saying? Is, there's so, a catch-22. Yeah, yeah, you've yeah. just, you you just got to be careful. If you've been obese for like 30 years and you start this diet, you know, that, that's going to be a stretch. Yeah. You know, you've got to get your okay. nutrition hormones in balance. So intermittent fasting, I mean, what an amazing tool. And it's basically 
how we've been eating for 2.5 million years. Okay. Okay. You know, hunters and gatherers. Yeah, tell us about that. Yeah, we, we, were, we were able to get up and, and, and do something called persistent hunting. Mm -hmm. Persistent hunting is we, we were actually, because we had no hair in our body, we were upright hominids, we could chase an animal down by walking and running. The, the animal that was covered with hair would basically have a heat stroke, and we would track that animal walking. It's called persistent hunting. We would kill it and eat it. Okay, that's that's what we did, you know, all morning hundred, long over the course of hundreds of, what, of thousands five, of years hours. ago. The the most dangerous animal on the Serengeti was the human because we were able to travel long distances. Mm -hmm. We were able to sweat, so we would get up. We wouldn't have a bowl of cereal or a power bar. What? We would no toast. We we would go out and 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 hit the ground and start looking for food. Mm -hmm. So genetically, we are hardwired not to eat three meals a day. Genetically, we are hardwired to be in a fasting state to be in a ketogenic state. So um, when you do intermittent fasting, and I put my, a, lot, a, a lot of my clients on an intermittent fasting program, but I get their brain chemistry and their hormones in balance first. Gotcha. Because if, if I got people banging down the carbs for 20 years and, and then they stop, and then they stop they're going to lower their serotonin levels in their brain and, you know. Go south quick. Yeah, I don't want to be the, I'm, and people know me, I'm not the food Nazi. I kind of see where, there are, see where they are and plug in something that works. And I know some of your clients eventually they come around to it and they think, wow, why didn't I, you know, try this? Or they, it takes time to adjust to it, then they're able to do it. Yeah, right. And jump right. onto it. It's not just right away. And there's several different types of intermittent fast. There's a 24 hour fast, and then you just, you know, fast all morning long or 18 hours, and then eat whatever you kind of want in the afternoon time. So there's plenty of stuff out there on different types of fasting that you can kind of look at. I like to, uh, you know, I plug in, like if I'm, if I'm doing a discovery and I meet somebody and we're sitting here talking and they're banging down the rolls at the dinner table, I'm kind of, Figuring they're under a lot of stress because yeah. you know those rolls I call them poor man's Prozac. So what do you say when you, when you, you know, I'm not, yeah I just the watch them grab the rolls. Yeah, if they if they got a lot of rolls or a lot of alcohol in their liquor cabinet, I'm like okay their brain chemistry. And again yeah, I don't I don't tell them not to drink and I don't tell them not to eat cars. My point is when I see their behaviors and what they're doing, just like back when I was a paramedic, I said okay I am not cutting carbs out of this guy's diet. Like I just I just yeah. met a I met a guy from NASA that's a rocket scientist. He's a consultant and. Um, he wants me to work with his diet. Well, he's got a history of AA, and he eats a lot of carbs. So here he was, an alcoholic. He's eating a lot of carbs right now. I'm, I'm not going to cut the carbs out of his diet. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to. You know, we're, we're just going to get a baseline and, and help him. So let's see. York University in Toronto did a study. Uh, why we're getting fatter over the course of 30 years, okay? And it's not because of uh, food, they were saying, for the most part. Uh, they list those as uh, prescription drugs, chemical exposure, altered gut environment, junk food marketing, dehydration, that kind of stuff. Okay, okay. So, whereas people think like, well, yeah, your diet has a lot to do with it too, but a lot of people don't think about the environment around you and how that affects on you and makes you, or can affect someone's state. No, I like that. So tell me about that. Yeah, you know, no, 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 and, and, and that's true, you know, weight loss, we used to think calories in, calories out. Yeah. And the doctor would say you need to exercise, but then I got marathon runners that finish a marathon and they're obese. So people were Calories trying... is a whole other topic. Yeah we're, we're, yeah, we're trying to help people get out of the railroad tracks. It's not about exercise. So weight loss, how do you burn body fat? You know, and it's multifactorial. It's different for everybody. But we also know now, because we do advanced testing, is that if your intestinal tract is out of balance, if you have a bacteria or a yeast overgrowth in your gut, you're not going to be able to burn body fat as more effectively. And they're like, well, why is that? Well, you are not what you eat. You are what you absorb. There you go. So in order to get the body to resonate, we get the intestinal tract in balance. That's why we test the intestinal tract. Yeah, pull nutrients out of food, right? Yeah, you're not if pulling you're not nutrients out of food. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Think about it. You need 21 minerals, 13 vitamins, 8 amino acids, 2 essential fats every day. Yeah. If you're eating food and you're not pulling nutrients out of food, you will mine calcium from your own bone. You will mine amino acids from your, from your own muscle tissue. So a lot of people you know, don't think about that. They, did, they just think it's diet or, or I'm just going to drink protein. No, that, you know, and, and again, it's about education. So what you said, the environment, a lot of the pollution in the environment causes elevated estrogen levels. Mm -hmm. in us, you know, um, ele you, could, you could Google xenoestrogens and when your estrogen levels are elevated, it causes cells to grow. You know, so and it, it blocks your testosterone too a little exactly, bit. Exactly, exactly. That's good. So men with elevated estrogen that have the belly and women with high estrogen, it shuts off their thyroid. So this is why I tell everybody, you can't just treat testosterone in isolation. You can't just treat a woman with estrogen. Yeah. You've got to look at, a woman has three estrogens in her body. So the environmental toxins, what, what you rub on your skin can elevate estrogen levels. But, you know, you, nobody talks about that. So, again, I want to be able to educate people on the Russ Scali YouTube channel where they could watch that Get the aha moment, ask their doctor a question, gotcha. you know?
Makes sense. Yeah. Doesn't anybody just want the right question? They just I mean, want the answers. Yeah, I know. I know. Just want somebody to give them the answers. People and people. Russ Gallo's YouTube channel. There you go. <laughs> Has all the answers. People, people are busy like. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, moms and um, I, I I take care of the executives. This is going to be a good one. This will help people. I always wanted to teach men and women about their physiology so so they would have more patience. So, you know, I I know that the guys take a lot of hits. I always get accused of, I take the men's side and I don't. You got a woman at home raising a two-year-old that used to be corporate, a corporate girl, and you got a guy out there taking the hits in the street, work, you know, running a multi-million dollar company. He's not going to want to come home right away. He's going to want to decompress. Mm. The wife hasn't had anybody to talk to all day long, so she wants to talk to her husband. So I, I tell these guys physiologically what's going on with them, and I have a concept with them. And they always go, will you come home and talk to my wife? And I'm like, I'm, like, I'm not a counselor. In fact, I'm the worst counselor on the planet because... I understand that the guys are running scenarios in their head. They're running a multi-million dollar company. All these scenarios in their head keep them busy. They're keep focused. And then on that drive home, um, they, 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 they want to relax. Stop. They want to wind down. They can't come through the door and get hit with a lot of stuff. So, and then the women, because I talk, you know, I, I have the Winter Park Dogs running group we started. We started with four people. We've got about um, 200 people in the running group right now, and most of them are women. And um, I, I run sometimes still with the group, and I listen to, to what the women say. Uh, they're at home, and they're used to being in corporate America. Now they're raising a child with vocabulary of two words. They don't feel productive. Yeah. They want they want somebody to talk to, and you know. So, I'm I'm just thinking that if we understood, and you know, the brain chemistry understood fluctuating hormonal levels, um, couples would have a lot more patience with each other. You know, and I'd rather have them patient. You, you don't want me talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny there's professionals for that I mean I, I want to help as many people as I can but I'm, I'm not a good counselor yeah. that moves too slow for me <laughs> so uh, your company let's talk about what you do for your genetic and metabolic testing just to kind of wrap things up here a little yeah we you know we, we started Scala Precision Health you can see Scala Precision Health our new website we've got a couple of centers in uh, Winter Park Florida right now the Institute of Nutritional Medicine more of the educational side of yeah things. the Institute of Nutritional Medicine and Cardiovascular Research still does a lot of the education stuff, and a Scala Precision Health is more focused on high-functioning people. Um, you and I shot the high-functioning video that talks all about high-functioning people. So right now we've got advanced nutritional and hormonal testing, we've got IV therapy, we've got stem cell therapy, all within uh, the Winter Park area right yeah. now. And um, So tell us a little bit about your advanced genetic and metabolic testing, your cellular level testing. So what do you do? I know you look at, we talked about looking at the Krebs cycle, real quick but let's break it down like on a cellular level like the mitochondria so I got a piece of paper for you as well okay right. okay cool so okay. tell us like what you do to look at stuff on a cellular level and I'm actually gonna okay I'm gonna draw a cell right here this is the mitochondria in the cell oh here and this is really cool see this is where the DNA is in the nucleus in each cell I think 10,000 cells can fit on the head of a pin in each cell you've got about six feet of DNA Six feet of DNA in each cell. So the complexity of an individual cell is mind-boggling. But let's stick with the mitochondria. The mitochondria is inside the cell. It's a little energy pack. This creates cellular energy, whether it's in the brain or in the muscle. Right now, I'm able to measure carbohydrates. I'm able to measure fats and protein. And how that mitochondria absorbs those, exactly. uses, utilizes those to make energy, right? ATP, here it is, adenosine triphosphate. ATP, how the mitochondria makes energy, like the testing that I just ran on you, we're measuring your mitochondria on a cellular level. Now, a lot of diseases have mitochondrial dysfunction, which on a cellular level, people are just not operating uh, efficiently. Yeah, exactly. They're not operating efficiently. So now, with some of the testing that we do, we're, we're able to look at the mitochondria on a cellular level. Whether it's a brain injury patient or a performance-enhancing athlete, we look at nutrition and how the cells are actually uptaking the nutrition, and then we adjust the diet. So it all that. starts with the cells. I mean, yeah. How they're performing. Exactly. And, and then that's why, you know, people that are out there just taking individual supplements or swallowing a handful of vitamins, you know, we're way beyond that now. We're, you know, this you is can, a whole paradigm change. You can tell them what supplements and what vitamins they actually need. Right. Because if they take the wrong stuff, it can push them off in the wrong direction. Exactly. If you just get somebody's gut, if you clean up their gut and their body starts to resonate and they're pulling more nutrients out of food... I mean, just doing that is going More to help. More vitamins themselves without even saying. taking the vitamins. Yeah, if you, if you clean up somebody's gut, you're going to elevate their hormone levels. So here, you say, say you got a woman or, 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 or a gentleman that's 60 years old. And, like, I had a guy come by me the other day. 
this is how I wrote, I wrote my muscle wasting program. I'm sitting at this restaurant scribbling and doing my ADD stuff and, and research. And this guy comes by me on a walker. And he's, he's taking like five minutes to go by me. And I see him struggling. His veins are distended in his arm. He's hunched over with osteoporosis. And he's walking by me real slow. And I'm thinking, why can't this guy go somewhere? in the U.S. and get answers. Yeah. So I'm, I'm writing down, he's got inflammation, he's got low testosterone, he's got low growth hormone, he's got osteoporosis, it's intestinal side. And I wrote this, this uh, muscle wasting program that, that, that you and did an excellent job, shot the video on. Yeah. So I'm looking at this guy go by me and I'm like, why is this guy not getting any answers? Exactly. And, and we could improve somebody's quality of life. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it's, didn't we land on the moon, man? I mean, we landed on the moon. I'm like, what the fuck? Well, medicine is a business, so. And we got to change that, man. Money. Yeah, we do. You know, we, 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 we really, it's, it's, very, it's, it's, it's very frustrating. I mean, I, I, I know we can do better. And I know that's why I surround myself with so many brilliant people. And, and those doctors that I have with me right now, those, those are the guys that are outside the box that are going to make a difference. You know, and, and what stays in my head is that one doctor in that hospital in Boston took care of all the trauma victims. And within a short time, all across the United States, there was trauma centers. So I think if we set up a couple of clinics with this treatment protocol that our team developed, I think it's going to go, it's going to take off. Because people, people, will, people want to stay better. They don't just want to take yeah. five different pills. And in order to do that, you have to be proactive. So it takes a little responsibility on the patient's part. Too. Exactly, exactly. But people are already doing that. They're already researching. They're on blogs. They're on other sites looking for this stuff. They're I becoming love it. smarter. I love it's great. It. They're becoming smarter. I love it. They're not intimidated by the doctor anymore. The, the physicians of the future will work as a team. They did a study and they found that doctors are actually get upset when a person comes in educated. Well, hey, get used to it. Mm -hmm. People are going to come in and ask you questions. And if they don't have time, then, then they're going to find another doctor. Mm -hmm. you, know, that, you know, that's what's, what, what's going to happen. It takes a team to take care of you and your family members. And, 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 and get a second opinion if you don't like, you know, you're going into a, a system, you know, iatrogenic deaths. Iatrogenic deaths means death caused by the healer. The iatrogenic deaths in the United States is through the roof. Hundreds of thousands of people die every day from medical mistakes. But you don't hear about that. You hear about performance enhancing drugs. You know? yeah. yeah, or you hear about the guns in the streets and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. But the medicine that we're all taking. Oh, my God. Yeah, get my kid on a low-fat diet and give him that ADHD drug, brother. <laughs> Okay, so that's about it, man. Anything else you want to add? No, we're good. Yeah, Rise of the Smart Patient. We shot a video on that, so we can talk about that. Yeah. Rise of the Smart Patient. So, become a smart patient. Become educated. Enjoy the stuff. Check us out. Russ Gala YouTube channel. All right. Russ Gala website. And feel free to email, contact. If you have any questions, uh, Russ loves his helping out and problem solving like that. So, feel free. Get educated and uh, become one of those smart patients. Thanks, bro. Yeah. It's always good a pleasure. Talk.